Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast, all about reinventing your health with safer, cheaper, more effective natural solutions and powerful lifestyle changes so that you become the CEO of your health. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder. When you take a moment and check in with your body, let's say for the past month, have you experienced feeling tired or unable to focus? Maybe there are moments where you've been irritated or you felt sluggish and unmotivated, or maybe you notice feeling bloated, gassy, and maybe even headachy. I point to these signs and symptoms because they are tangible, noticeable, and can be extremely disruptive, especially if some of these symptoms are happening every single day. For example, I'm just gonna use my pregnancy real quick. During the first 21 weeks of my pregnancy, I experienced 50 plus migraines, and I was so bone crushing tired that I found myself crawling on the floor from one task to the next. These symptoms were so disruptive that I had to drop things from my schedule, I had to cancel anything and everything that wasn't immediately an emergency. These were the types of signs and symptoms that can feel like they are ruling your life. They definitely felt like they were ruling mine. But today, I wanna talk about a hidden symptom. I wanna speak into stress. Here's the thing about stress. It's insidious. Stress is a silent killer because most of us are entirely unconscious that we are actually experiencing it in the moment. Now, there have been multiple times in my life that I have been very addicted to stress. I would say that stress has been my drug of choice. I would go so far as to say is that I have thrived on stress because I really loved leveraging that extra boost of energy that I would get from epinephrine and adrenaline. I would feel so wound up. It just felt like I was ready to conquer the world. Now I would use epinephrine and adrenaline to give me that cutting edge and to get through my tight deadlines and crazy endless to-do lists. It was literally the best way I knew how to get a lot done in a very small amount of time. And I experienced a lot of quick wins because of stress always backing me up. And I learned how to be extremely efficient because of stress. I literally time myself doing everything so that I can improve that time to do those activities faster the next time. I was literally always up against the clock from pumping my gas to going grocery shopping to getting ready in the morning. Everything was timed. I thought leveraging stress made me a superwoman but I was really the poster woman for rushing women's syndrome, disguised in a superwoman cape. Now, before I continue on with my story, I wanna take a moment because one, you may be wondering, what is rushing women's syndrome? And two, also wondering if you're actually experiencing it yourself, like right now or earlier today when you were rushing off to go do something. Now, this term was coined by Dr. Libby Weaver And she had found that most women are struggling with some form of rushing women's syndrome. Like there's a spectrum of the level of rushing that we can experience. It's like we're programmed to do the most in the smallest amount of time. Basically, make the impossible happen. So here's how you know. You have rushing women's syndrome if your instinctive answer to someone asking you, how are you doing, is I'm busy, or I'm feeling stressed. If you rarely get enough sleep, you make fast and typically poor food choices, you rely on coffee to rev you up in the morning and in the afternoon, and you use wine to calm down at night, you move very fast, afraid to let anyone down, you will do everything possible to avoid saying no, squeezing every last drop out of your day, even if it means answering emails in the early hours of the morning or super late at night. Hello, 12 o'clock, 1 a.m. email replies. Literally, there is no rest for you. For so many women today, rushing is the new normal. You might not think that you're particularly rushing around because you're handling business. But your liver, your gallbladder, your kidneys, your adrenal glands, your thyroid, your ovaries, your uterus, your brain, your digestive system, and your immune system certainly does. 
Now, I have found that we often don't even know when we're experiencing stress because it's so unconscious and we don't always pay attention to our body's physiology. Like many women, I operated as a rushing woman for many years, ever since high school. And if I had to go way back to when it first hit me on how to operate this way, I would say that it was a conversation that I had when I was nine years old that literally changed it all for me. As I have shared here on the podcast in the past, my childhood was not an easy one. And there were times where it was very, very hard and even very scary. For many years, I did not do well in school. I honestly was pretty convinced that I would never be smart. I consistently got D's and F's. I even repeated first grade. And one day a family member sat me down and said to me, yep, it's true. I wasn't naturally gifted in academics and it would always be hard for me. But if I worked harder than everyone else, and I outperformed and outpersisted, I could still get ahead and create success. And I remember in that moment, sitting on that bench at the park, I remember feeling very disappointed about not being smart. But I was also hopeful that there was another way out for me, that I could still be something when I grew up, if I worked extra, extra hard, and I wanted it more than anybody else. So. I did just that, especially in high school and college. And honestly, many years of my life were a constant blur, moving and shaking and being persistent and getting my hustle on. I literally ran faster than people to meetings, to events, to competitions, you name it. I learned that if I could hustle harder and I wanted it more, that I would win and it paid off. I was the most decorated kid in my high school class with a 4.8 GPA. I got full academic scholarships to multiple colleges. And from there, I just kept pushing and hustling. If there was an opportunity, I took it. I didn't think twice about it. I just added more to my plate and kept at that pace for years. I was like Hamilton in the musical. I was never satisfied. And I just kept benefiting from working harder, smarter, and faster. Until one day, it felt like it all came crashing down. I leveraged stress hormones as my secret weapon until I was so depleted that my body just gave out. I was 30 years old and I crashed harder than I could have ever imagined. So hard that I literally couldn't get out of bed in the morning. But it didn't stop there. (laughs) On my road to healing my body and my hormones, I kept ending back on the floor, Mack trucked by stress again and again and again, until I finally got the memo and figured it out. I was holding on to a deeply embedded belief that if I had stopped or if I just stopped doing the things I was doing, I would lose everything. I was being driven by fear I was literally living in survival mode, clawing at the next opportunity like my life depended on it. And it was only then that I see the entire picture. As long as I held on to this limiting belief that was clutching onto me, that no matter what I did, if I stopped, I was going to lose everything. I knew that I was going to keep getting sicker and feeling more miserable. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I'm just 30 years old. I've got a lot of years to live. I've got a potential family to raise one day. Like, what is this all gonna look like? And honestly, what kind of life is that to live? To run like you're constantly in survival mode all the time. And the physical symptoms were no fun. Crazy mood swings, exhaustion, sleep issues, anxiety, an inability to focus and function, migraines, and the list went on and on and on and on. Once I saw the writing on the wall, I knew that I needed a dramatic transformation if I was ever going to feel like my former self again. At this time, this quote kept showing up for me. Every next level of your life will demand a different version of you. 
and I was ready for a different version of me, one that felt energized and happy and at peace. Because ultimately, although the accolades are amazing for each and every one of us, the wins and the successes and the obligations and the fulfilling for our family, yes, it all feels good in the moment or necessary in the moment, but ultimately, I think each and every one of us just wants to experience a little extra happiness and a little extra peace. And if I could get some whipped cream and a cherry topping of energy, hook a sister up. So what I did is I started with self-awareness. Once I knew what was going on, I could then tune into myself and pay attention to the cues. Because before that, I was just running full steam ahead. I never paid attention to what my body was saying. Next, I started a morning ritual. Because honestly, it felt like the easiest step in the right direction. And all you really need to do is take that first step. See, I'm a big fan of having a morning ritual. And you know that because I talk about it all the time here on the podcast. And the point of a morning ritual is that it's designed to nourish you and set the tone for your day. And I love setting the tone for the day that I want to have. I love having a day by design, not by default. And it's much easier to get out of the fast-paced, energy-draining danger zone when you're able to start your day on your terms by doing something that nourishes you. And today I have a little special gift for you at the end of this episode very shortly, so stick around until the end. Now, as I shared earlier, for years I believed that I didn't have any room in my schedule for a morning ritual or a routine, but every morning was fast-moving chaos. Yes, I was efficient. Yes, I was well-timed, but it felt like I was in a rat race before I actually started my day. And the rest of my day, no surprise, followed in suit. It's no wonder that I needed coffee literally at 11 a.m., 2 to 3 p.m., and still felt depleted by 6 p.m. It was during this time that I read a quote by Louise Hay, and she said, how you start your day is often how you live your life. And I remember reading this quote, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. I finally realized that my life was a representation of my crazy busy mornings. I was literally a Tasmanian devil with some high heels and some lip gloss on running through my morning and just plowing through my day. I never felt grounded. My energy was depleted by late afternoon, if not before that. And it was in that moment that I released some of those bigger limiting beliefs because best believe we have more than just one. Um, One, that I didn't have enough time. And number two, that everyone else comes first before me. I decided to give that morning ritual a try and see what happened for 30 days. Because don't we all have 30 days to commit to becoming a better version of ourselves or to feel better or to feel happier or to have more energy? I mean, at this point, honestly, I didn't have a choice. And at the end of those 30 days, I was sold. I realized that each day we get to choose the day that we're going to have. And morning rituals really allow that to come into reality. This is when you have the opportunity to choose your intention and flow for the day. Set your body and mind up for success with morning rituals that will support you throughout the day, especially when you look at that calendar in the morning and you know you have a lot on your plate. Now, I found that if you start your day without a morning routine, goodness knows there were many years like that, you will be subjected to whatever is getting thrown at you, depending on other people's needs and agendas, caffeine intake, blood blood sugar levels. I mean, honestly, you're going to have some kind of day, but it's going to be subjected to external factors, and it's going to feel like you have little to no control over it. And I promise, This will lead to less energy over time because your body and your hormones are just having to respond to the constant barrage of incoming tasks and fires. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to share some ideas to consider for your morning. If you are listening to this episode today, you're listening to my story, you're nodding your head and you're saying to yourself, huh, 
That sounds a little like what I have been experiencing. Now, note that a morning ritual can be 10 minutes. Ideally, I like 20 minutes, and I always say each of us should be able to carve out 20 minutes of our day that is focused on shifting our energy and supporting our emotional well-being, right? If we can't find 20 minutes in our day to love up on us and to get super laser focused on how we wanna feel for the rest of the day, then we definitely need to rethink how we're living our life. So here we go. Here are some wonderful ideas to consider for a morning ritual. Now, I'm going to list off a bunch of amazing ideas, but I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. It's really about picking one or two that feels really in alignment with you and giving that a try and then adding extra over time if that feels like it's in alignment. Here's the list. Breathing deeply. Being positive about your day. Setting the tone by eating right. Green smoothie, yummy glass of water, matcha tea, whatever that looks like for you. Hydration, movement, whether it's yoga or taking a walk outside or a little workout, whatever that is. Journaling, especially gratitude journaling. I do gratitude journaling at night and then I also, I have a little crystal by my bedside and I go back through all the things that I'm grateful for for the day before I go to bed. So I literally bookmark my morning and evening with gratitude and man, it shifts everything for me. Also, it literally shuts down the mental chatter because when you're coming from a position of gratitude, especially at night, all those worries and to-do lists and all that stuff, it just kind of melts away. Next, meditation, which I do every single day, not always in the morning, but something to consider. Using oils and aromatherapy, day setting, so getting clear in your calendar, complimenting yourself in the mirror, celebrating yesterday's wins, reading something that you love, like a great novel or a personal development book, affirmations, any of these things honestly are perfect to start your day, even end your day. Although I know we're talking about a morning ritual today, not an evening ritual. So once you pick out one to two rituals that feel good to you, that final step is saying yes to you and choosing in. Deciding that you are worthy of self-care can be the hardest part. Shifting that belief that I had around self-care or morning rituals was the most difficult part for me because until I could honor myself enough, I wasn't going to implement new changes that focused on my needs. And that meant I had to change my belief, my consciousness, my habits, and literally how I lived my life. But I also knew that how I had lived my life up until this point, at least when it came to my health, wasn't serving me. So once that shift happened and the actual self-care came into place, I was amazed at how easy it was and how much it shifted everything for me every single day. Morning rituals and self-care helped me to create peace in my day. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm entirely stress-free because that would be a blatant lie and I am fully transparent on this show. I do not lie to you. But I have worked really hard to incorporate these rituals along with honoring my body to know what it feels like to have peace in my day and to operate from a place of abundance and not lack. Basically, I know when I fall back into survival mode and I can make changes and adjustments to get back to a place of peace and abundance. Now, I definitely still have my stress moments But again, I'm just quick to notice them and make adjustments. And what I've learned throughout all of this, and again, 30 years old version of me was 11 years ago. Just a heads up. So it's been a journey. I don't want you to think this is going to just happen overnight. What I've learned from all of this, especially the hard way, is that you can have it all. You can have the goals and the dreams and still have the peace. It's really about creating flow and prioritizing your needs. Self-care and peace don't need to ever take up massive space in your day unless you want it to. It's simply about carving out time for you to refuel, recharge, so that you can get back out there and continue to kick booty because I'm not telling you to not do that and live your mission, live your truth, live your purpose with just a little bit more ease and grace. Like what if you could have your mission and your purpose and your ease and your grace? Then I would say heck yes to all of it. 
Now, if any of this is resonating with you today and you see a little bit of yourself in me and my story, I want you to know that you are never alone on this journey. And I want to share a little gift that I created to help you get started. Because it's one thing to listen to a podcast episode. It's one thing to have me rattle off some ideas around self-care and morning rituals and that first little step to take. But it's another thing to actually have a guide, to have a reference guide with recipes and how to actually begin to put this into place. So I would like to send you and gift you some easy morning and evening rituals and recipes I have my top 11 wellness rituals guide along with recipes and an energy boosting guide because let's be honest, everyone can use a little extra energy in their life, including myself. And I call it the Vitality Bundle. Now it's gonna be in the show notes for this episode, which is 233, I believe. I just know it is in the show notes for this episode. And I just wanna say thank you so much for stopping by and joining me today on the Essentially You podcast. I hope that my story helped to shed light on what is possible for you and that creating peace in your life is 100% doable. And I know so often that when we've got that moment of peace, that we really get to channel in that happiness, that joy, just that feeling that, I don't know, it's just something that I lacked for so long and I'm just so grateful that I have it today. Now, on the next episode, I am going to bring on Isa Herrera, one of my dearest friends, but she is a pelvic pain and pelvic dysfunction expert, and there are millions and millions of women who are struggling with pelvic pain and pelvic discomfort without viable solutions, and I just want to bring her on to highlight her on to really share how we can naturally heal from these issues, especially when it has to do with the pelvic floor muscles. So this is going to happen coming up on Tuesday, and I hope you have a chance to listen in. There's lots of wonderful takeaways, especially if you or someone you know is struggling with that. And until then, I hope that you incorporate just one little self-care morning ritual and just kind of tune into your body a little bit more. Kind of pay attention to when the stress response system is kicking into high gear or when you're even feeling at a time of peace and rest. Until then, have a wonderful week and I'll see you soon.